Hey everybody, just finished up a, a big project that we've been working on for a couple years. This is a 1949 Dodge Power Wagon. Um, this was not our project from day one. We started about probably 30, 25, 30% of the way through this project. It um, is on an aftermarket chassis. Um, these cabs never came extended cab or crew, or, or crew cabbed. Um, so anytime you do that, you gotta cut the cab, move it back, and you can buy a lot of the pieces and components nowadays that are stamped. Um, this cab actually got started in its fabrication process at the manufacturer's shop uh, before the, the owner and him decided to not continue the build. So anyways, they started this. Um, we had a friend uh, up north. Um, he helped us smooth out some of the really complex sheet metal. So like even up at the, the back cab corners um, all this stuff up here they had just like pieced together little squares of sheet metal to try to make round um, and it was terrible so luke he went ahead and cut all that out and he shaped um, these pieces and tig welded them all back in and then uh, he helped us do some pieces in the hood which um, this is a factory hood so um, a lot of this stuff has to be has to be just right it's just like a single sheet of sheet metal so it's really hard to work with it can't get warped um so anyways luke started doing some of that sheet metal with us and then uh dylan and i finished up 99 percent of of what you see here so a lot of these door gaps that are really good um took a lot of time um like these b pillars they had these b pillars in the wrong spot we had to cut them and move them um, now that guy he does make these doors so you can buy this entire door from him now the complex part that most people don't understand is yes, he makes a door and you can buy um, a door, a door handle, right? But you can't buy the piece of glass. You can't buy the, the attachment point inside here for the, you know, the, the run channels to attach to. And if you want power windows, you definitely don't have a window regulator in there. So a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of time went into making this truck. A vehicle that's really a, a drivable vehicle that you can roll windows up and down close and lock the doors and uh and put seals in so rain doesn't come in it um it's unreal that there's a lot of these power wagons that have been put together um without some of the stuff that that makes them really good vehicles so like you can even see here where um, dylan and i dimpled uh the the door shells and then there's like a, a modern corvette uh window regulator it's electric and then, um, so like we had to start out making these out of quarter inch MDF, and then we had to sand them and sand them and sand them until we got the shape just right where the electric motor would pull them up and, and they'd seat nice. Um, even how these um, run channel felts attach, like they can't go all the way back in the door shell. So we had to cut pieces of wood and bond them. The, you know, we had to cut them the exact thickness to set this. Um, so then we had to bond them in there and then these, um, screw uh, up into the boards you know to hold them in there so all kinds of stuff like that on this truck took forever but this has turned out to be one of the coolest vehicles that we've ever had um, any part in um, but even the floors the rockers all that stuff has to get made even the seat risers like we made all the seat risers um, and then like integrated speakers i think there's a set of three and a half inch speakers down in here and then we bonded you know, mounting rings to the back side of this and there's speakers in there. The rear seat, um, it's held in by really strong rare earth magnets, but you can still lift the base of the seat up and there's storage inside there. Um, we built a little cage. Um, it's not much of a cage, it's mainly just a rollover protection bar. Um, so there's a rear main hoop and then a, a driver's B pillar main hoop and then some bolt in bars um, that hold it all together. And then there's some LED map lighting. So if this ever really went over, um, you know, he has a, a better chance of surviving a rollover now, um, other than the sheet metal cab just caving in on itself. Um, I'm just gonna talk about the interior since I'm right here. And I'll tell you what, I'm gonna go around to the other side since the sun is so intense. But we, um, if, before you open the door, you can see that we put electric steps. Amp research stuff is pretty cool. I think these were for a, a, a newer Tundra. 
Um, but anyways, Dylan and I shaped this lower piece uh, of the dash. It holds all the HVAC controls and the vents. Um, low car nowadays makes some really trick looking bezels, uh, or not bezels, but knobs for the windshield wiper motor and headlights and, you know, even the, the levers on the, on the steering column for my did it. Um, the gauges um, fit pretty good in this factory rectangular section of the dash and they were actually out of a cutlass. Um, the Dakota Digitals, obviously, um, but I think the application was a cutlass. So those actually work out really, really good. Um, they show all the information you would ever need to see, you know, whenever your oil changes do, um, you know, your trip, ambient temperature outside. Um, it shows you check in. I mean, it shows you everything. Um, but I really, really like how the upholstery turned out in this truck. Um, Shieldman seats are what we prefer to use a lot of times in these vehicles that get a lot of miles on them. Um, anytime you're actually going to drive a lot of miles, man, you have got to have some comfortable seats. You know that we're all about some track days and autocrossing and stuff like that, but those seats <laughs> are way out of place in this environment. So the Shieldman seats have lumbar, um, the leg section or the under your thigh section can move in and out, can move up and down. It's got heaters in the bottom and the back. You can see it's got high and low seat heaters here. Um, just really, really comfortable seats. They've got map, um, map storage in the back still. Um, our friend Luke again um, is really good at really complex sheet metal and uh, he did the center console for, for Gene and us. We had a pretty weird, specific idea of how we wanted this. And so, uh, man, he knocked it out. Cup holders and power window switches. All that stuff turned out really, really good. Um, we wanted the interior to be pretty stock. That's why all this stuff is here. Um, I sh the easiest thing would have been to put a screen right up here, but man, after all the work keeping this dash nice and clean, the last thing I wanted to do was put a screen up in there. So that's kind of what we did. Glove box, uh, we fabricated the sheet metal glove box and bedlined it inside. Um, it's got trailer brake controller here for when he hooks up his trailer. Um, electric parking brake. This is very cool. Um, the key's on now, so that's why it won't set, but electric parking brake is just a really trick feature. Um, got speakers up front German square weave carpet on the bottom which is one of my faves um, green seat belts I'm sure I've gone over that but um, let's get right to it man the uh, the part that y'all want to know about is the drivetrain I'm sure um, this one has got a Hellcat crate motor um, in the beginning I had my doubts um, I thought geez a gas motor in a vehicle that is this big can't feel great um it'll be it'll be not enough power and uh i was definitely proven wrong um this motor is very powerful feeling um that big blower um gives it tons of torque it is a riot to drive on the street man i'm very happy with how this turned out i'm sure the fuel economy is piss poor but um it makes all kinds of fantastic sounds and gets tons of looks on the highway. The frame is an aftermarket frame. Um, you pretty much have to build these chassis. You can buy the rails. They've got one bend up here where the front, the, the engine is and the front suspension, but then you can buy them as long as you want. So if you're building a crew cab, it's a certain amount of length, but uh, these suckers are like inch and a half, five inch rectangular tubing with three eighths wall. So they are super heavy duty. Um, Dylan and I tried to move this frame around in the shop. You can't even pick the front end of the frame up when it's, even when it's bare. Um, it's insane. Um, transmission is a 4L80E um, adapted to that Hellcat. Bowler Performance Transmission has built that transmission and it works very, very well. Um, man, converter locks up in fourth gear. You can cruise 80 miles an hour. It feels fantastic. I love the gear ratios in a 4L80. That's really one of the big reasons why we chose the, chose that. Um, it's, it's more of a close ratio transmission um, than, than a giant widespread. Um, so first gear will actually last a little bit, last a little while. Um, it makes this low end torque feel good. It won't just immediately light the tires off. I mean, it, it will, but you know, if you had like a, a 4.0 or even some of the modern transmissions have really short first gears, um, it's useless um, in my opinion. 
the rear end selection, the gear ratio for the rear end gets really complicated. Um, so putting a close ratio transmission like a 4L80 is what I like to do. Also, it'll hold up to this thing forever and ever and ever. Um, MP205 transfer case with twin sticks. Um, the axle's out of um, like a one ton or a three quarter ton, maybe 2010 Dodge truck. So they're a 14 bolt in the back and they call that like an AAM 925 or a metric Dana 60, I guess is what that would be. So I don't know everything about all that stuff, but um, really heavy duty parts. Um, the truck turned out really good. All that stuff is heavy duty. We got about 300 miles on it now and everything is really good. King coilovers with no sway bars. It feels awesome. It feels like a trophy truck when you drive it around town. Um, all LED lighting. Um, it has the factory PTO driven winch that is now hydraulically driven. Um, we've got like a um, hydraulic lift bed or a dump bed, uh, electric DC electric um, over hydraulic pump in the back. And it turns the orbital motor up here. And so you just got a little controller that you plug in and you can run the motor forward or backward to you know, feed or reel it back in. So that turned out really good. Use like a really fine um, half inch aircraft cable. It looks super, super heavy duty. Um, I don't know, just overkill like every other thing on this truck. But um, anyways, that's this truck. That's a lot of the uh, technical nitty gritty. Test. <laughs> okay, these are, here I'll get the good side, JRI coilovers. This is for the OBS build. But you guys have been really into this build. I'm really into this build. And um, we're, gonna go, we're gonna go do some more filming. I wanted to catch this uh, real quick since it came in. I was super pumped to open this, so I figured I would do a little un unboxing video. Um, the OBS truck, the frame is off the frame table. And it'd be funny if these is just two coilovers. And it's the front, <laughs> not even the two that I'm waiting on. <laughs> now it feels pretty heavy. <clears throat> but anyways, it's off the frame table uh, and the body's mounted, uh, but we need to make the rear shock brackets so that we can get it into a rolling chassis. So Zach's been all over me like every other day, like, hey, one of those shocks gonna be here. Well, finally they're here. Oh yeah. So it is all four. Cool. So these are the front. So I got 800 pound springs on these. These are double adjustable and they're the, the simple adjustments that I like. So this is the canister. Um, since this is a, I don't know, I guess you'd consider this a shorter stroke shock. Um, it's still a pretty darn long shock if you compare it to other chassis and trucks out there running around, but um, this can only hold so much fluid. So um, it's better to do a remote canister um, to give us more uh, fluid capacity. So you can still have a short shot. Yeah, short or stroke, right? And, and, and not overheat that small amount of fluid. We got more fluid. Cortex Racing is obviously the ones that set up all the valving. Um, they get the parts and pieces from JRI, but then they valve them, um, at Cortex racing. So he, we gave him all the corner weight measurements. Uh, I gave him the spring rates. We gave him all the motion ratios and they set us up with really, really good JRI coilovers. So these are the fronts. Oh, I just remembered that I need to order the brackets for these. Here's the other adjuster. So now we'll look at the backs. I think all four corners had to have uh, canisters in this vehicle. So that's the other front. I'm curious to see what spring rate I picked for the rear. I don't remember now. Very cool. So the neat thing about JRI, um, is that I can look at this, like I can tell them exactly how much room I have in my bracket and they'll machine the, the spacers for me. So I don't even have to, I don't have to do that. Rears were a 400 pound spring. Very cool. So again, double adjustable. Look at this man. I'm so pumped at that. They machined all the spacers for me. So cool. All right. 
Well, I'm going to give these to Zach and let him get them put on. Got a little helpers on them. Those are nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, take up. Take up that slack so your spring ain't bouncing around. Peter's over here helping me take off the decals from our sticker. It's the end of our racing season with the yellow and white truck, and we're going to turn it back into more of a street truck mode. Um, I don't mean that it's going to be anything less than what it is, but we're going to take a lot of the stickers off. We're going to take the splitter off. Um, we might possibly change the seats. We might even possibly change the transmission in this truck. As all of you know, or a lot of you know by now, um, Peter is, or excuse me, Paul Treadwell is the owner of this truck. He's the one that's been sponsoring us to race the truck the last couple seasons. And now after SEMA, we're going to clean it up. We're going to take it to Dino's. We're going to show it in the Willwood booth. And then we're going to work with Paul to um, turn this into a truck that he can drive a lot on the street. So it'll just be a really rowdy street truck uh, from now on. So anyways, when we're taking these stickers off, I wanted to kind of take an opportunity for us to recognize our sponsors and inform you guys on, on who they are and what they do. And, and I'd like for you guys to check them out as well. So the first one that's the, probably the most obvious and prominent on this truck is the No Limit Engineering. No Limit is a close friend of ours. They manufacture all the chassis that we buy. Um, they're big in the pro touring truck world and have been for a lot of years. Um, they've spent a lot of time R&Ding and building what we believe is probably the best chassis that you can buy for a C10 if you're wanting to get into the pro touring stuff. Rob has been uh, just a, a huge mentor of mine. He's been a friend, well, is a friend, and uh, I've worked with him for uh, quite a few years. And when it came time for me to put one of his chassis under my personal truck and Paul's truck, um, he was right there to say, listen, I want to help you. Um, we want to sponsor the truck. We want you to campaign for us as well. And so that's uh, one of our, our big sponsors is No Limit Engineering. So if you guys don't know about them already, check out their website. If you're interested in talking more about getting a chassis of theirs under your truck, please email us or Keith. Uh, we're happy to put a quote together for you guys. Uh, we're probably the top dealer in the U.S. for them now. So anyways, that's No Limit. Another, another close friend of mine and a person that's helped me a lot uh, within the past year is Barry Alt at Motorhead Digital. Uh, this is his brand here. Um, again, a huge advocate of Level 7 Motorsports. He's helped us with everything in the digital space. His company specializes in the automotive industry specifically. So if you guys um, have a friend who owns an automotive business, anything in the automotive industry, or you personally have some kind of automotive related business, and you need help in the digital world, whether that be marketing, website development, doing blog posts, social media campaigns. That's where Barry comes in and that's where Motorhead Digital is so awesome. He's been working with us for probably the last year. It was since SEMA last year. Um, and he has really fixed a lot of stuff on our website, showed us how to correctly do SEO, um, even, even tips and tricks for YouTube and some of these videos and microphone suggestions. A lot of this stuff has come from Barry. If you guys need help in that area in your automotive business, Barry's where you go, Motorhead Digital. So anyways, huge thanks to both those guys. And then obviously Paul at 3T Garage or 3T Ranch, a great friend of mine. This is his pickup truck. And, and, and this is where all the funding has come from, from this, for this truck. Um, he, um, from day one, said that he wanted to build a really badass C10 race truck, square body. He wanted this truck specifically to be his. And he wanted to build this truck into something very cool. Um, that's why this truck is, or he is why this truck is what it is now. Um, we can't thank Paul enough. Paul has made my dreams come true um, with, with some of the ideas and theories that I had about stuff that we could do with a pickup truck and parts that we could buy if we could afford them. This is all Paul and 3T Garage, so huge thanks to him. But anyways, I don't wanna create a giant video um, covering a lot of this stuff. I mainly wanted to talk about the sponsors that have been involved in this project what they do and why they've been so important to us. So anyways, please, I'm going to put in the bottom of this video links to some of these guys web pages or their social media feeds. Um, check them out, show them some love, tell them that you appreciate what they've done for your level seven and the yellow truck. And they've all made it possible for us to bring you guys content on this truck and for us to race this truck and, and you guys enjoy it with us. So anyways, that's it. Um, next time you guys see this truck, it's going to be a, a little different looking, no stickers on it, and a little more classic truck looking. So anyways, that's it. Thanks.